First, I uh, like to thank uh, all of you for taking time out and, and coming. And B, uh, I thank all the uh, panelists who are here. Um, the, the, the most unique thing this afternoon, perhaps, is that most of you may have heard or read about these brothers and these sisters. But we may or may not have had the privilege to have all of them at one time, at one place. I believe, based on the facts, that these folks were forced into becoming part, important part of Muslims' history in this country. They didn't ask for it, but they were forced into it. And each one of them had very unique experiences of their lives, extraordinary experiences, frankly. And you and I all have an opportunity to learn from their experiences for our future and the future of our children. Instead of introducing each one of them as they come up, because we have limited time, and I am pretty sure that uh, this uh, particular session would be extraordinarily useful for all of us, I would share a quick um, uh, brief uh, introduction of all five of them at one time, and then we will invite each one of them one after the other. Uh, starting to my closest, uh, Brother Brandon Mayfield, uh, has the unique distinction of being the bomber of the trains in Madrid, Spain. And I am sure most of you heard that way, because I heard that way too, that there is an attorney, happened to be Muslim, who uh, uh, architected, participated, engineered the death and destruction that happened tragic death and destruction that happened in Madrid, Spain. And indeed, lo and behold, two years later, uh, we found out that this was the wrong person. Tens or hundreds of millions of dollars, taxpayers' money, yours and mine, was spent. Life of an innocent man, a father and a husband, almost destroyed, and had it not been for his faith, perhaps it would have been extremely difficult for this father and husband and a community member, uh, a tax-paying citizen, uh, uh, to, to have withstood all that had happened to him. So today he is with us and we are uh, deeply thankful. He had other engagements, but uh, he uh, canceled all of them uh, to honor us this afternoon. So on behalf of the Muslims in Southern California, I am deeply grateful, Brother Brandon, for taking time out and being with us. Uh, next to him is a brother whom we have seen uh, in the past couple of years in uh, Los Angeles or Southern California area, uh, Brother Chaplain Captain Yusuf E, who had the <laughs> unique distinction of uh, being the chaplain and an eyewitness account, eyewitness to the atrocities and the lawlessness that had happened in what we now know as the infamous Guantanamo Bay, where hundreds of innocent men, women, and children continue to remain in detention for the past five plus years. Brother Yusufi also uh, withstood all the challenges that came his way, was incarcerated, solitary confinement, uniformed officer away from the family for 76 days and then eventually exonerated by the court of law. And all he asked from the government, simply say, sorry to me for what you have done. But our arrogant government chose not to say sorry, forcing him to resign as a patriot from the US military and writing his experiences and memoir into the book that is displayed here for God and country. Next to Brother Yusuf E is a Professor Isabel Gunning, a very dear friend of all of us and all peace and justice lovers. She has two very important hats that she wears. 
One, she is a professor of law at Southwestern Law School in Los Angeles, and also happens to be the president of ACLU, American Civil Liberties Union for Southern California. Uh, under Isabel's uh, leadership, uh, Muslim community has greatly benefited. Many individuals, communities have been uh, on the receiving end of the generous work that ACLU had given to all of us uh, and in protecting and preserving the civil rights and liberties of uh, most of us. Uh, following uh, um, Isabel as our dear brother, uh, not that Isabel is not dear, um, Abdul Jabbar Hamdan. Abdul Jabbar Hamdan, you all know very well, but those of you who don't know, Brother Abdul Jabbar Hamdan is a longtime activist, um, founder member of uh, Masjid Al Ansar, uh, West Coast Islamic Center in Anaheim, and also involved with several other organizations, including the now um, temporarily uh, closed Holy Land Foundation uh, uh, as he served uh, as a fundraiser for that organization, who also early morning uh, at Fajr time, uh, uh, about two years or less than two years ago, uh, um, I'm sorry, less than four years ago, uh, was picked up by uh, the government as a national security threat and served, uh, rather was forced and detained for over a year in uh, Los Angeles as a national security risk, father of six, husband, um, father, an, an active worker, somebody who loves orphans, whom prophet said that they would live with me like this in Jannah in the life hereafter, in the heavens that is. So his love for orphans and impoverished and destitute is to the extent that he had to sacrifice his one uh, year life away from the family. And uh, eventually, he, uh, the government was forced uh, to uh, let him go also. Um, next to Brother Abdul Jabbar Hamdan is uh, Sister Laila Al Aryan, uh, a very, very dear sister of all of us. Uh, Laila's uh, situation is very unique. Uh, Laila is paying the price for her father. Abdul Jabbar paid price for his children and wife. Yusuf E. paid price for his wife and children, and so has Brother Brandon. In Sister Laila's case, um, I am a father of four. I can only imagine, I can only imagine what would happen if my father or my mother were to be picked up by the government for ABC reason, and then I have to play the role of that father for the rest of my siblings while continuing my education, while um, trying to remain sane, while standing up for justice to defend my father who is innocent, uh, and so on. So these are extraordinary human beings. I firmly believe that my children and your children must never dare forget the stories of these innocent, honest, peace-loving American patriots who have given their life and blood and sweat to stand for what is right, for to stand what is just on behalf of all of us. So it is a, a very, very great honor for me. And frankly, I, I cannot think of any better occasion that I have had in this year, 2007, where I have had this privilege to stand with all, uh, with all four of them at one time, at one place. So with great pleasure, I present to you all five of our esteemed guests, and I would like you to join me in welcoming them. Uh, with that, each of the speaker will speak uh, between 10 to 12 minutes, uh, and uh, after that, we will have obviously some inter -ex exchange of uh, dialogue with, between all of us. Um, I believe this program runs until about uh, 3:40, and. Um, at 3.40, if you all feel that this is extremely important and you should continue uh, listening to these brothers and sisters, ignore the reminders that people will give from those two doors. <laughs> and keep doing what you're doing because I do believe this is extremely important for all of us. So with that, inshallah, we will start from Brother Brand.